Well, you know, I started as a DJ in the 80s. So it wasn't like I was in the 90s playing 80s music. I was actually playing music in the 80s. And um, I went on a little tour with MTV's 120 Minutes and Dave Kendall, who uh, was the host of that show. We opened for PIL and Big Audio Dynamite, which were some 80s bands that were big at the time. Started promoting concerts as an offshoot. I ended up opening my first nightclub with $20 and a can of paint. Some friends of mine had a nightclub that went out of business. Figured if we only had $20, $30 to spend to make the new nightclub, about all we could afford to do was paint the place and give it a new, new flavor, so we painted it. Taught myself how to be an artist manager. Promoted a lot of concerts, did a lot of themes, book bands. Creed was one of those bands that I was booking as a cover band. And um, I heard a couple songs that I really liked that were originals, so I arranged uh, through a mutual friend for them to borrow the money to go in the studio. I hired a producer who was an artist on Atlantic Records. And we spent $6,000, made the first Creed record. And that was the actual record that was in stores, that $6,000 record. We remixed it and added a couple things here and there. But uh, that record went on to sell 8 million copies wow. for a $6,000 investment. It's pretty amazing. I didn't actually realize that that wasn't normal. It wasn't normal just to take some band that had just been playing covers a month ago, make a record, send it to some radio stations, and they'll play it. So that opened a lot of doors, you know. I was just lucky enough to be able to walk the room when they opened. I mean, Paramore's been successful. I've had other successful clients, but that was an anomaly. It, and it was just weird that that was my first foray into the music business was a artist that ended up selling on those 40 million records. I managed Creed for 10 years, took on Paramore, Creed broke up, took on Alter Bridge, which kind of sprouted out of uh, the Creed ashes, if you will. Um, did get in a car accident and probably 2008 and I decided I was gonna to some extent retire from the music business. About six months of being technically retired I decided there's nothing to do when you're retired other than coach kids sports which I do a lot of. There's always trials and tribulations. Um, you know I just recovered from a six month battle with cancer. Man when that happens to you you're like you just want to be with your family and your kids but I had a lot of time just laying around from the chemo and radiation with no energy to really do anything. I realized, you know, your life kind of flashes before your eyes in a sense. And I thought about what's really important to me and felt like I'd been successful, but I didn't really have any real legacy outside of the coaching. So I decided to do a mentorship program with college students and people just graduated from college. and entered into these relationships where, you know, um, it could be symbiotic, you know, and I could kind of pass the torch a little bit and teach them things and tell them things and guide them and give them, you know, a references and a resume, but also tools to be successful.